Hello again and welcome back to the channel. In this update of the channel, we're gonna be talking about the latest changes to the camera slider project. And as you can see, the camera slider now has a seventh axis that is a telescoping mast. Well, it's actually um, a seventh axis, but uh, my controller still only has six axis of control. So um, I borrowed the axis from the focus motor in order to uh, drive the telescoping mast. So what I really wanted to do was get this update out. Um, this is in no way a final uh, for what you see here with the telescoping mast. Um, you can see um, kind of scattered around the room, there's kind of a lot of things in disarray. Um, I just really kind of put it together as quickly as possible because I wanted to see what works. And a lot of the times when you're doing um, you know, doing a project and you're not really following a plan and you're kind of making it up as you go along. Uh, you kind of have to test things, make sure they work, make sure they do what you expect them to do, uh, you know, before I invest a lot of money and time into finalizing parts and things. So I can say um, with pretty good certainty that um, there was definitely a lot of failure in this uh, telescoping mast attempt. Uh, you know, the overall slider, uh, the software on the slider, the um, the controller, uh, the software I created to control all of that stuff, the ESP32, I'm pretty happy with all of that stuff. But um, this telescoping mast was uh, definitely a new endeavor for me. Um, uh, kind of underestimated how hard it would be to actually build it and make it work. Um, so I don't know if this, uh, this telescoping mast that you see here in the video uh, will ever get finished. Um, I kind of see what's wrong with it and um, I don't know if I'll be able to fix it. So I have some ideas to fix it and we'll see if I can implement those. But uh, the main problem with the mast, um, number one problem, and I realized this uh, as I was about one third of the way uh, done building it, as you can see the mast is um, built in three, uh, I call them stages. So there's a top stage that that the camera platform is mounted on. There's the middle stage and then there's the bottom stage that has the, the stepper motor and the, um, and the linear rail. So the first thing I noticed when, when building it is after I put that first stage together, because that's where I really started was the first stage, uh, I noticed it was really, really heavy. <laughs> and then when I built the second stage and slid the first stage into the second stage, uh, as you can imagine, it got even heavier. And the bottom stage, which is holding the whole thing up, um, just made the thing so ridiculously heavy that I'm really surprised it hasn't come uh, crashing down and uh, dropped a big hole in my floor yet. But um, it's actually pretty strong uh, for being how heavy it is. Um, it's just really, really hard to make it move fast because um, it is so heavy. Um, and uh, the other main thing that I, I went really wrong on was the the two, um, well, the bottom section is stationary, so it doesn't move, uh, well, it slides, but it doesn't move up and down. So the middle section and the top uh, section of the mast, um, neither one of those are supported at the bottom of, of the section itself. So um, what, what I get is, and you can see it here in the video, especially um, when I've got the lens zoomed in as much as you see in this shot right here, when the lens is really zoomed in, and uh, it actually you'll see it in a, in a different part, uh, you can see the shake. Um, if you look on the left side of the screen where you see the, um, the room overview and you see the mast itself, uh, you can see when it's moving up and down um, that it's shaking pretty violently, uh, which really, you know, obviously that's not a good way to have uh, professional uh, video uh, to have your camera shaking all over the place. So um, I, I thought of some ways to, um, to put some rollers in the bottom of each section of the telescoping mast. That should help um, you know, stabilize it so I can move up and down uh, without having that rotational whipping of the, uh, the lead screw. That's what's causing the shake, by the way, is um, you know, the other thing is the lead screw is only supported at the very, very bottom of the stage three where it uh, is attached by a shaft collar to the NEMA 43 motor in the base. And then it's unsupported uh, at the very top. So as it spins, it has a tendency to want to whip. And the faster you spin it, the more it wants to whip and the more the camera shakes. So 
I don't know if I'm going to waste any time on uh, trying to secure that second stage and um, um, uh, to, you know, kind of uh, get rid of some of those shakes, but uh, it is what it is. It's actually pretty usable. Um, uh, also keep in mind that um, what you're seeing here is the raw camera footage uh, taken on the camera. Um, on the uh, slider and the telescoping mask itself is a Sony a7S III with a 24 to 70 lens. Uh, it's on autofocus because obviously I don't have a focus motor on this rig since that channel on the controller is being used for the, uh, the vertical lift. Um, and that Sony camera, uh, while it does um, record the metadata, uh, the lens I use, the 24 to 70 G Master, that has a, um, you know, it records all of the metadata from the gyro and the lens. So you can take this footage and you can take it into Catalyst Browse and you can um, stabilize it. And uh, I thought it was important to show you guys here um, without any stabilization on the, uh, on the footage. This is raw footage right from the camera. It's not even color corrected. Uh, the exposure is on auto. Um, the focus is on auto. Uh, and the same with the, um, the camera shooting the, um, the, the room view itself. That one is, um, well, it's stationary, so you don't have to stabilize anything, but it's also on auto. I did attempt to white balance them both against each other, um, which was a lot harder than it sounds, since the A7S III um, really auto white balances the easiest way to get a quick balance check. But anyways, the um, the camera from both the, excuse me, the footage from both cameras is um, completely unedited. Uh, I crop them or and uh, resize them to make them both fit on the screen. But other than that, uh, there's zero edits. And this is a continuous take. And it is, of course, done uh, in real time. So um, other than the camera shaking, uh, I did learn a lot. Um, I, I, I might actually do a breakdown on the roll axis. As you can see, um, kind of as I throw into a roll right here, um, uh, while uh, crossing over from the front side of the uh, the DJ setup to the back side of the DJ setup, um, it, it does a pretty severe roll in order to uh, kind of even out the picture. But um, the roll is constantly moving in this video. If you if you pay close attention, you'll see that the camera is always rolling, it's always panning, it's always tilting, and the slide and vertical act, vertical lift never stop moving. They're all continuously moving. Um, the subject does stay well, mostly, um, you know, the same size in the screen. I wanted to give it a little bit variation, but even when the camera's up very high, uh, this, the subject kind of stays the same. And obviously that's because I'm moving the camera up on the lift, but at the same time I'm zooming in. And sometimes the moves are done so smoothly that... Um, you know, unless you really pay attention to the background and the perspective, um, you, you kind of don't even detect the movement because it's um, it's done so synchronously. And I love moves like that where you kind of, um, you know, when you do like a Scorsese move where you zoom in but dolly the camera back at the same time and your subject stays the same on the screen, but um, the background changes, <laughs> the size of the background changes, but your subject stays the same. I love those kind of moves because it uh, it makes for a really uneasy effect. But um, I love doing moves like this here where you kind of uh, start with the subject out of frame and you slide or pan or tilt into the subject to kind of bring it into focus. But uh, of course, um, with this setup and the camera shake, I'm getting just a whirlwind of, um, uh, of shake in here. Uh, I, you know what, I, I think I will try to stabilize some of this footage. I don't know, let me know in the comments, guys, uh, if you're interested in, in, since I do have this this raw file here, um, if you're interested in uh, seeing what it looks like uh, stabilized, uh, maybe I'll, I'll do that and just post a, a full screen of that so you can really study the shake or the lack of shake. Hopefully the stabilizer would be able to pull it out, but who knows, um, I haven't stabilized uh, any of the footage from this yet. Um, one of the other things uh, that I had started to talk about um, a moment ago was the um, was the roll axis. So in, in my first video, you saw the six axis pan, tilt, roll, uh, zoom, and focus. So those are your six axis. And uh, in the roll axis on that first slider, I built the roll axis with these cheap 
um, I think they're like $20 Lazy Susan bearings. Uh, 12 inch was the biggest one they had on Amazon. So I bought a couple of those and I built my roll axis out of that. So I've got a Lazy Susan bearing in the front, another 12 inch Lazy Susan bearing in the back. And then in between that, you saw that I have that big 12 inch um, roll gear, which is a, a herringbone um, a gear. Um, that turns the roll axis. Well, I thought I'd do that for this thing too because I knew it worked and I already had the gear design done and I could just print it up and make another one. But um, it, th those bearings are just awful. So um, I am not using the uh, Amazon Lazy Susan roll bearings in this rig uh, for this video that you see here. I've redesigned it um, with a 3D printed um, substitute. Uh, I pretty much had to use the same size as the Amazon gear, but um, I've uh, reprinted, I've re remade the gear, 3D printed, um, and it does work a lot better. Uh, so that's what you saw in the video here was the roll axis using the uh, the 3D printed. Um, so the whole roll axis is now 3D printed, but uh, I guess that's the end of the motion. So uh, with that, we are done with this video. Tune in for another one. I hope to give some updates. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And we'll see you the next time around.